What's up guys, I'm KBHD here and just got back from sunny California where we spent some time with possibly the busiest man alive, Elon Musk. Uh, but he was super generous with his time and we did this sort of a sit down chat at the Tesla factory and then also did a sort of a factory tour which will be a separate video coming soon. But a ton of things we could have talked about since we were at Tesla at that time. Basically our topics ranged from talking about Tesla products to our love for Tesla to tech and the future all wrapped into one. So this is that chat. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. All right. First of all, thanks for uh, taking the time, sitting down on your very busy schedule, I'm sure. Good to see you. Yeah, good to yeah, see you too. Welcome. Uh, this, is a, this is a really interesting place to be. We're kind of in like a bird's eye view of seeing a couple, couple different things happening behind us in the factory. These occasionally move, which is yeah. cool. Those are, those are empty door carriers. So like, they would have okay. carried the doors to cars to get assembled and then they're on their way back to pick up some more doors. Nice. So uh, I think most people know you as the boss, the face of Tesla, uh, the decision maker. For those who, just for some context, what is your, how do you spend time at Tesla? What do you do? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I think probably a lot of people don't realize I'm like basically just uh, in the factory in design or engineering meetings or production. Um, so that's like 80, 90% of the time. I think sometimes people think I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what gave, why, why they would think that. Uh, that's crazy. Um, but uh, actually, it's like, that's like almost nothing. Um, uh, most of uh, my time is spent, um, well, at least in the last several months especially, uh, going around the factory um, and then working on, say, uh, the, the, the paint shop, the body shop where we weld up the body, um, the uh, uh, final assembly where we put all the parts together. Um, and, and then if I'm not here, I'm, either, I'm at the Gigafactory in Nevada. Okay, so P100D owner undefeated in stoplight races for That's a while right. now. Uh, Rich over here in audio. Hey. Model 3 pre-order, uh, pre okay. waiting for his, and Brandon behind the camera also waiting for Model 3. Okay, what, what version are you waiting for? <laughs> Long range. Long range? Long range, Long range and, and, and what color? Oh, okay, that is, a, that is a good combo. I got blue uh, rear wheel drive. Nice. Nice, okay. Silver. Cool. So my question is, how, aside from making great products, how do you get people excited about Tesla? There's a lot of people I know and that I talk to who are just intrigued and interested and excited about Tesla as a company. The thing I really focus on at Tesla is, like we really, really put all the money into and attention into trying to make the product as compelling as possible. So, because um, I think that really the way to um, sell any product is through word of mouth. So if, if one, somebody gets the car, they really like it, they, and, and actually the key is like to have a product that people will love. Yeah. Um, and, and generally people, the, um, you know, if they're at a party or touring to friends or whatever, um, you'll talk about the things that you love. But you, you know, if you just like something, it's okay. You're not going to care that much. But if, if you, you get love the reactions from the highs and the lows, yeah, so you got to make sure people it, really love you're it. Gonna, it's, yeah. You're going to talk, you know, and, and, and then that'll generate word, word of mouth. And that's basically how, how our sales have, have grown. Like we don't we don't spend any money on advertising or endorsements or uh, and um, so anyone like buys our car, they just bought it because they, they like the car. And you know it's like it's genuine, um, and no discounts. Like I, I actually even pay full retail price for my own cars. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and then we're really focused on trying to make the, the cars more affordable, which is re really tough. Like in order to make the cars affordable, you, you really um, you, you need high volume. So you need the economies of scale. And because the other car companies make a lot more cars than we do, they got way better economies of scale. So as we're gradually able to build up um, and do do more cars, higher volume, then we can um, build them for progressively like less money and then make um, make the cars available to wide wide range of people but it's super I must say like the car industry is like a super this is like super competitive it's like one of the it's like insanely competitive so as far <laughs> I think I, I read a really interesting or I think I heard it actually from an earnings call but something interesting you said is one of the top five most frequent trade-ins for model 3 is a Prius right yeah uh, which actually, starts at you know, twenty something thousand dollars, and they obviously have massive economies of scale. Do you think there's room? I mean, Tesla has Model Three, Model S, and Roadster, and up. Is there room for possibly an even less expensive quality yeah. electric car experience? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think in order for us to get to like, let's say, ultimately, 
getting to like a, a twenty-five thousand dollar car. Um, uh, th that's uh, that's something we could we could do, but it's probably if we really work really hard, I think maybe we could do that in three years. Does it come years. with time and scale, or just? Yeah, it's a bit of, it's a bit of both. Yeah, because like the. The key to making things affordable is is like designing is, is like design and technology improvements as well as scale. So if you think of like say um, phones, um, like the very earliest like the earliest cell phones, like I don't know if you remember, <laughs> uh, I'm probably like dating myself here, but uh, like the original Wall Street, uh, <laughs> where, where the guy's like walking down the beach and he's got like the it's like on a like giant a, phone. He's carrying on like a briefcase kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. They're massive. Yeah. Like massive massive phone. Yeah. And and like all it could do is phone. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and like had like 30 minutes of battery life and that kind of thing. Um, now, at that time, uh, in the absence of technology improvements, like no amount of money, no amount of scale could have made that phone affordable. That'd be a lot of engineering iterations, a lot of design iterations. Um, and, and we're probably, I don't know, on the 30th version of, of, of a cell phone. Or, um, and, and, and with each successive design iteration, uh, you can add more capability, you can design, you can integrate more things, you figure out uh, better ways to produce it, uh, so it actually gets better and cheaper. But it's like it's, it's like a natural progression of any new technology that it, it takes multiple versions and a uh, large volume in order to make it affordable. Gotcha. Is there anything in the near future of Tesla that you're really excited about? Yeah, there's a lot of things actually. <laughs> um, I mean, really, like we've got definitely way more product ideas than we uh, have resources to execute. We were just talking about. This uh, with with my team, uh, just like hey guys, what you know, what should we focus on? And now in the past, we've only done one car at a time, um, and but as you know, as we go into the future, we've got to like basically figure out how to walk and chew gum. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like okay, how do we do two products at the same time, but still have enough resources that both products are great? Right. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to do, you know, two products. Um, one of them for sure is, is like the Model Y, you know, sort of compact SUV, um, comparable price point to the to the Model Three. Uh, then there's uh, the semi, the pickup truck, and the and the next gen Roadster. Yeah. Like, a next gen Roadster is kind of like dessert. We gotta so talk about like, that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's super exciting, mm -hmm. but it's like, and I think there's definitely some value to to doing it to show that an electric car can be faster than a gasoline car in every way. Yes. Uh, so I think there's like. You know, because it's still this sort of like halo effect of 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 the gasoline sports cars. Because like in terms of top speed, they're still have the best top speed. Yeah. Um, so that halo effect that I was gonna basically every metric possible seems like really ambitious. Like there's a lot of things that people people like me kind of accept that. Like I love my electric car, but I I know it's not gonna put down lap times 30 laps in just because there's yeah. So there we go. Exactly. We got to work on that. Yeah. yeah. In okay. fact, I was, I, I was actually. Um, I was just talking to the team. I was like, uh, you know, I think we got some headroom there. Yeah. Um, oh, are we going to talk about track mode? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, because oh, I, I had okay. a, a very short experience with track mode with Model oh, okay, 3. Okay. Yeah. So I love, so obviously Roadster is going to be, yeah, that, that Halo car. And if we're confident it's going to be an amazing car, I hope it's that car to beat, essentially. Y yeah. But then bringing track mode down to Model 3 brings that fun experience to a lot more people, that yeah, higher volume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So 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 it's kind of like, um, you know, like uh, like we're like basically a bunch of nerds here. So um, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Yeah. But like like the you know so for track mode we want to like, uh, open up a lot of settings. Mm -hmm. So like you can adjust settings and it's kind of like an expert user mode, um, and and you can sort of um, adjust uh, traction control, uh, adjust like bat battery temperature. Um, uh, um, you know, break like you can basically uh, configure a bunch of things, um, and it will tell you like, hey, you know, if you do this, it's a bit risky. Like you're gonna yeah. wear out your brakes a little sooner. Uh, it's like you might blow a circuit. You know, <laughs> like th like, but like it'll be clear. Like yeah. you know, um, like this you know. is this is the risk that you're taking. Yeah, it's kind of like if you, if you have a, a graphics card in a computer, you can like go in there and you can change the settings and you can like overclock things. Yeah, um, and like okay, but you know. <laughs> so that's going to be all that will be in track mode, and you'll yeah. be able to see that and mess with it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it'd be cool, and you can like try different things and. Weird. Um, yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, a little more on Roadster, because I had a I made a video about it just after the event. I was sad I couldn't be there, but I'm a day one deposit because I was that excited. Okay. Uh, but I was wondering after you made that announcement. One, you said I think I quote plenty of space. What does that mean? 
Oh, you mean like like to, like it won't be cramped inside. Like like, like basically, um, if you're if you're a tall dude, you'll yeah. be able to sit in there. How tall are you? A six one and a half. Okay, so I feel like if you're comfortable in there, a lot of people will be. Yeah, and and then like my brother's six four. So and is he like, comfortable in it? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, and, and Franz is like six three. I don't know. He's okay. pretty tall. And um, then my other question was uh, the side mirrors. This has been a theme in, in the past with prototypes and cars that we've seen. Before they come out, they don't have yeah. mirrors. Regulatory, they have to have mirrors. Is there an advantage to Actually, not having mirrors, or is yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Is it just aerodynamic, or is there more to it? Now it's 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 actually surprisingly um, how how the mirrors, particularly at high speeds, can have um, quite a big effect on the drag of a car. They're like little air brakes, basically. Like typical car uh, side mirrors reduce highway range by around five percent. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. So you can see in a wind tunnel, like you can see, you know, when you see like the sort of smoke trails in the wind tunnel, little you can pockets. see just how much. Yeah, they're yeah. like they're just like air brakes. So to be aerodynamic, you actually want kind of like a teardrop. Uh, shape, so it's like it's it, it doesn't end in like a bluff, right? Because it creates a low pressure zone behind the the mirror, and so you'd have to like have a kind of a almost like a cone behind the, the mirror, or 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 blend it with the body or something like that. Okay. So it's like they're actually surprisingly draggy. Um, now, a, a manufacturer is required to have side view mirrors, but I I believe that a uh, the owner is not. Like you're, I, I think you're like. <laughs> Okay. You can modify things, like at least in the U.S. You can, if you, uh, the the owner can modify things. The rule is about manufacturing, not it's driving. Very much about manufacturers are very tightly constrained. Okay. Um, and it's actually one of the things that makes it very hard to to make um, a, a car that uh, looks good and has a good performance and aerodynamics and everything. Because it's like you got you got all these constraints and there's so many rules you need to follow. Um, so it, it's very challenging to make a car. Uh, look good. My other question about Roadster, um, the specs are insane. They're ludicrous, some might say. Yeah, uh, plaid. So the plaid, either. The, the only thing beyond ludicrous is plaid. So, so <laughs> 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, but more importantly, I was interested in is the 200 kilowatt hour battery yeah. and the 600 plus mile range. Is, are these numbers uh, assuming an improvement in available technology by 2020? Or are they something you can achieve now, but don't have the manufacturing capacity to, or is it somewhere in between? Yeah, so um, I think of it like basically, uh, it's like two uh, Model S uh, P100 packs. Yeah. Um, but but you're really just doubling the the the, in, the internals, the the, set, the cells inside. So there's like a lot of stuff that's related to the pack and the packaging and the safety and all that sort of stuff that um, is uh, not related to the cells. So you can double the the, the the number of modules inside, and at with, but it, it would still be like maybe an 80 percent increase in the volume of the the packs. Like the floor would get four, four or five inches higher if if that if it was current technology. So, but, um, but, but we would, we we think we'll probably get um, another maybe 20 percent, 10, at least 10, maybe 20 percent improvement because we'll use, the, the thing about like an expensive car is we can use the, the state-of-the-art, the most advanced yeah. e equipment. Like it's kind of like with, uh, with computers, like they've come out with a new like graphics card or, or, or CPU. It's like initially it's, it's expensive um, and so, but then over time that, that price drops down. And people like wonder is it like, do you have like automation, do you have people? It's like we have both. Um, you know, it's just like a cyborg, but like integrated cyborg thing. Yeah. Actually, like one of the biggest constraints for us is is like being able to hire enough people. That's what I was gonna ask. So yeah. like, and there's a lot parking. of parking, man. Parking. <laughs> there's a lot of parking here. Yeah. But if you have a lot of robots and a lot of people in the factory, what do people do that robots can't do? And obviously, there's a lot that robots can do as far as lifting and moving things. But as far as precision, maybe there's things they can do that humans can't do. Do you have a ratio off the top of your head, maybe, as far as people versus Machines. Um, you know, it varies massively depending upon what part of the production process. Um, right. So, so, some parts of it are like eighty to ninety percent automated, and then some parts of it are like uh, only ten to twenty percent automated. What are those? What are those parts that humans do better than? Uh, hu humans are really good at adaptation um, and and rapid evolution, and like doing like little like finicky things, like like that. Um, 
like for General Assembly, like one of the mistakes we made uh, that was like pretty pretty big mistake was trying to uh, automate uh, General Assembly, which is where you put the parts together. You know, so, like some of the things, it's like like trying to connect uh, a hose that, that's like sort of dangling around. I see. And 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 then you got like the robots like got to find the hose, grab it like. Then connected to another hose. At that point, it's like really hard. Yeah. For, like a person could just go, oh, they're done. Gotcha. Yeah. That uh, makes uh, a lot of sense. Yeah. And okay. it's like when you see it, it's like, wow, it's super, super obvious. Right. Um, and then we try to have robots do this, and it's like robots like grabbing the wrong thing and like trying to stick it over here, and it's like, <laughs> oh, the, the the hose was here when the robot thought it was here, and so yeah. now it like tries to grab air and then like smashes into the car. <laughs> it's like you don't want that. It, we yeah, it was a comedy yeah. of errors, a uh, tragedy of errors. Like person, you can say like this thing needs to connect to that thing, and and then however they they arrive person could figure it out. The robot know. would be... The robot would be like, ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> And then as far as uh, Tesla's overall master plan is what it was originally called. So you start with the low volume, high price Roadster. Then you move on Model S, higher volume, lower price, to Model 3. As far as I know, that's where the master plan ended. Yeah, that was like part one. Yeah. Part I mean, one. We had Model X in there, which, uh, uh, you know, was, it was that, that was, that was like... That was definitely an exercise in hubris. Uh, the, 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 now the X is an amazing car, and it's like, um, but it's like we kind of got carried away with the art. I hear it's very we, difficult to make. Yeah, we, we got carried away with the, with the, the carried away with the art and technology. It's like it, it, obviously you want great art, you want great technology, uh, but we did get a little distracted from our mission, which is to like advance the cause of, of electric vehicles, um, and, and it probably delayed us a little bit with the Model 3 as well. So I guess my last question in here would be, just as far as the Tesla master plan, uh, part one, coming to an end, mm -hmm. is it now just a matter of steering the ship towards new opportunities? You see, there's not a lot of companies making a $35,000 electric car and a quarter million dollar supercar and a semi-truck and doing them all really well. Right. Do you guys see yourself just Keeping a tight ship and picking your your choices here and there. Yeah, that's why we, we, um, what I was saying earlier, like we, it's it's a it's a tough strategic call um, between focus and like being, wanting to do a bunch of different models. Like we we, we I think we, we we want to try doing two at the same time. Um, like so we've only ever done one at the same time before. Do two, and then and then um, if we get get that. If we're good with that, then we could just try doing three at a time. Like a lot of the other manufacturers, they'll do like you know twelve at a time. Yeah. You know? So they're way bigger than us. Weird. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it, and right. thanks for taking the time to sit down. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Cool. <laughs> Appreciate it.